Be been here? A, it's been a long wait. I'm here every day. What's it oh, like for you to be here? Uh, I've never seen you here. What's it like? <laughs> you know what I mean. What's it like to be on the cusp of finally getting to, to get in there for your first I, I very much, and this is this will be uh, this will be misconstrued as a quote if you just read it, but I, I very much have a uh, I can't wait till it's over kind of feeling thing. You know, not that I'm. Uh, uh, I want to get it. I, I want to get it over with because I'm ready. I feel ready. I'm prepared. Uh, and being here every day for like five hours a day has made me feel that way. So it, it feels uh, it feels nice. There's like a relief. There's a there's like a calm. I'm excited. A little bit of nervous energy, but it's all positive. Does, does part of that have to do with the expectations that are on you for this fight from everybody, from your peers in the UFC, from the fans? Uh, you know, that's like a case-by-case -case basis. I don't know what the expectations are. I know what my expectations are. I know what my team and my coach, what they expect out of me. Um, and I think it depends on what corner of the, uh, you know, the media or the internet you look at to see what the expectations. People expect me to get knocked out. People expect me to get starched in you know, 30 seconds. People, some, and the people who know, who see me work here every day, they expect me to win. What are your expectations? My expectations are to win. Uh, go out there, uh, whether it goes three rounds, whether it goes three seconds, uh, my hand will get raised. That's what I expect. I expect to, to show up uh, best shape of my life, happiest I've ever been, and happy looking in the mirror before the fight, knowing job well done. Now, you were saying just before about, you know, the nervous energy. Can you give, is that all compared to when you had your first wrestling match, or is it two totally different things? You know, I think it's two totally different things, you know. Like, when you have your first wrestling match, you know, you're trying to memorize everything. You're trying to, <laughs> you're trying to not screw up. Um, I feel like when I spar, it's more loose and I'm, I'm having more fun. I got to worry less about things. It's more muscle memory, and it's more, did you do enough? For preparation to perform and I 100% I, I feel I have and I still got one week of hard training to go. Duke was talking about how you know the episodes show you pre-back injury. We were here obviously a long time ago and did a story with you. How long of a road has it been for you to get to this point? I, I mean it's been a pretty long road you know and, it, and it's funny because you can you can ask yourself you know uh, Oh, what happens if I lose? What happens if I get embarrassed in front of the world? Uh, and then you think to yourself, well, you, you've shit yourself on national television before, so how bad can it go? How bad can it really be? What's the worst thing that can happen? Um, and I tend to think of uh, this entire journey, uh, it being more about that journey and discovery about yourself and making new connections with coaches and friends and teammates. Uh, than it is the, the final destination. But for me, if I never did this, I'd still be walking around with a herniated disc. Mm. And uh, the thing about being a, a wrestler is you're your own worst enemy. You just keep going. And I was in here every day, and I just kept going, and I just kept going. And I could make excuses like, oh, yeah, okay, okay you know, yeah, my back's just sore. Uh, these guys are better than me. They're faster than me. You know, like, uh, I'm just, maybe I'm just getting old. I'm not as strong as I used to be. And then once... <laughs> Once I got diagnosed with the herniated disc, it was like, you can't even get a shot to fix this. You got to get this thing cut out of yourself. It, it wasn't even so much like disappointment or, or depression or, or anything. Like I was, I was elated. Mm -hmm. And then I came back in the gym uh, and I was a completely different person. So, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, the worst thing that can happen is I, I get back surgery and I feel like my whole self again. And my dog's all over television and he's pretty awesome. And, you know, <laughs> I, I just... I just I just look at everything, I guess, uh, differently than everybody, you know. So that, that, the the footage that everybody's seeing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and criticizing, uh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. I was I was I was operating on you know 25% power. So you can take the Chicago, or you can take the boy out of Chicago. Can you take the Chicago out of the boy? No. Do you live here now? No, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I go home on the weekends to make sure my house hasn't burned down. So, you know, I'm still very much, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dual citizen of Milwaukee and Chicago. And it's all Midwest, and the weather's all the same, and the people are all the same pretty much. So it's, it's all good. Is food all the same, too? I, you know, for what I'm eating right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I won't, I won't get into a pizza argument with you. Your first UFC fight, but you've seen the big lights, the spotlight, the pressure, that sort of thing. How does dealing with that in the past help you deal with it now in a different way? Uh, I think this is old hat for me. You know, I, I think other people, you know, walk into a gym and 
you know, see all this and they're just like, ooh, this is a little bit spooky, you know? And to me, I just kind of make a, make a joke and I go, oh, all this for little old me, uh, it's old hat. You know, I'm, I'm just used to it. I'm actually, I'm comfortable in front of the cameras, in front of the lights, in front of people, booing, cheering, doing whatever they're gonna do. I've had batteries and loaded diapers thrown at me. It's all good. Does that give you an advantage in the fight? You know, just if you look at it. Having a loaded like, diaper thrown at me? <laughs> 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 Anybody, I'm getting it right now, but no, just being in front of the bright lights, you've wrestled in front of 80,000 people. Mickey Gall is lucky to be in front of a couple thousand people. So do you feel all that and all of this right now gives you that advantage heading in? I think it could give me an advantage, but it's not anything tangible that I'm leaning on giving me an advantage. Like, I'm not hoping that frazzles Mickey or anything because we don't know. It might not. It might. If it does, yay for me. If it doesn't, good for him. I know Mickey's tough. This is really a battle against you against yourself. Could you touch on that? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's only probably one guy that you, you can't find more tape on than Mickey, and it's me. So I think the, the fight's intriguing. But, you know, w w without sounding disrespectful to him, this is, this is my story, you know. So uh, this is about me wanting and almost needing to do something uh, just to prove to myself that I can. You know, there, there's, there's people out there that, like I've said, they, you know, they hope I lose. Uh, and there's people out there that realize that once I step into the octagon, I've already won, you know. And, and for me, uh, I'll probably say this a dozen more times today. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And that, to me, is a microcosm of life. You know, It's not about the diploma you get after six or four years of, of college. It's about, it's about learning and the experience you gain during those years and the people you meet and the, the bonds and the connections you make uh, along that way. I hate to put things on your shoulders that you can't control, but people have been told, just like you've been told, they can't, they won't, they shouldn't, they, they never will. And you've been told that too. You're champion, you're kind of the people's champion in a lot of ways in that regard. Is that something you're, you're happy to take on your shoulders? Or, I mean, it's just inevitable with so many people looking up to you and you fighting for, you know, believing in yourself when kind of no one else did for a little while. Well, I, I, I don't know if that's my responsibility to bear. Uh, I, I do very much. Uh, appreciate when people say that they look up to me and they, they see me as an inspiration uh, and I do take that very seriously but there's also a flip side to the coin is the people that you know will look at you or somebody else and and write you off and say that you're a joke you, you, you can't really get married to either idea you know you get too far you know your head's too far up your own ass if you believe like oh yeah I'm the, I'm the people's champion and you know I'm this and then you're, you're already defeated if you say things like oh I, yeah I don't belong here uh, I suck I you know I'm this and I'm that you know and it's it's very much a balance I'm a, I'm a guy that if you say you know I hope you lose and I'm like great I don't have to worry about you anymore and then somebody over here is like we're pulling for you I say thank you I, I, I appreciate it you know there's there's a fine line you got to walk the middle Anthony says you're going to surprise some people. What, in your opinion, are you going to surprise them with? <sighs> just, just that I'm ready. You know, I, I think a lot of people have uh, misgivings of, you know, what it takes to fight. Uh, and to me, that's the most important word is fight. I don't, I don't care if somebody wants to make fun of my technique, how uh, not crisp my right hand is. It's going to land. You know, and that's the punch I care about, the one that lands. You tell me I didn't turn my wrist over soon enough, I don't care. It landed, you know, and I think that's how I'm going to surprise a lot of people. You know, I, I spar with Anthony on a weekly basis. You know, I don't think anybody would be surprised uh, at the outcome of every single time I've ever sparred Anthony. <laughs> He's a world champion, you know. Uh, I spar with guys, you know, Mike Biggie Rhodes. He belongs in the UFC. You know, Gerald Merchard belongs in the UFC. Uh, Craig Eckelberg belongs in the UFC. I, I, I truly believe that I, I, everybody on this pro team belongs in the UFC, and this is the toughest team in America. Is your wife on board now? You, seen, you said before when uh, this all first happened that there was some convincing that needed to happen. And is she finally on board on the train, or is she still going to kind of watch with one eye open type of situation? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how she's going to watch. Um, you know, but she's she's fully on board. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do this without her for sure. You know, people talk about you know your your coaches and your teammate preparing you. Um, she's you know it's like head coach Duke Rufus and like kind of grandmaster 
April Brooks. <laughs> you, know what I, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, um, she's not in here, you know, putting it on me, but, you know, she's, she's at home. She, she lets me sleep in when I need it. She cooks meals uh, when I'm exhausted. You know, she lets me sit on the couch and ice my back when I need to. She, she, she walks Larry extra when she has to, you know, so she's, she's really stepped up, you know, and um, selfishly, I'd probably say she's my best teammate, you know what I mean? Uh, you're not a look in the rearview mirror type of guy, but a lot of people have speculated you come out to the ring and with cult of personality. Have you decided kind of what you want for your first fight to come out to? And oh, I've decided. I decided a long time ago. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta, gotta order the pay per view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I promise I will. Awesome. And then the only other thing is, uh, can you still cut a hot promo? Can I? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can ask me to do it now, right? No, no. If you no, want to. No, I can. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's uh, I think that's something that never goes away, and I, I think you're more or less born with that, you know. Um, but I, it'll probably happen the closer you get to it, to, to the fight. Like I said, I I, I just uh, no, I'm just I'm just super stoked and happy, and I'm not really in that headspace to be cutting pro wrestling promos, you know. I know you had said leading up to this, you had talked to Brock, and he kind of helped you guide you when you first made this journey. And have you been able to pick his head a little more just as this has gone on and further along in the process as we get closer to the fight? No, he, he reached out. He offered his uh, his help and his support. You know, he gave me the, the thumbs up and said, you know, reach out. If you have stupid questions, go ahead and ask me. Um, and then I, he lives in the middle of nowhere in, like, Saskatchewan. I think I texted him once and it bounced back right away. So I, yeah, I didn't expect him to, to, to get back to me right away. He's like combining on a on a farm somewhere. What do you make of everything that went on with him after UFC was over? I think it sucks. Uh, you know, I do. Uh, I get tested by USADA all the time, and I'm the drug-free kid, and I'm st I still get nervous. You know what I mean? Like I'm still like, uh, it's like when you're driving on the highway and a cop's behind you. You're like. Well, I wasn't speeding, and my tail lights aren't out, and you know. But like, let me get over here. Like, I want to, you know, get out. Um, so I, I like what they're doing with the sport. Uh, just it, it, that whole thing bums me out, you know. Like he he, he came back, um, he fought an impressive fight, and he won, and then you know he, he fails a test. You know, it always bums me. It bums me out when anybody fails tests. Because it gives you a bad look. Cause I've seen some people say, oh, you know, look at Punk. You know, maybe this is what that old WWE statement. What do you say? I mean, look at look at me and look at the bodies of the guys who failed tests. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm a skinny fat kid from Chicago. You know, you know what I mean? Like uh, I don't think it, I don't think it reflects on me at all. I, I think it if it reflects on me, it's because I'm a fighter in the UFC. You know, and it reflects poorly on all of us. Punk, thank you. Oh no, no good problem. luck.